Hello folks, welcome back to the second part of this week, which is a two-point perspective on the same object. So it's still a chair, but this time we're going to turn it around ever so slightly. So instead of having the front face facing us, the edge is going to be the closest thing to us instead. Now, do remember, if you find this a little bit challenging or complicated, you can head on over to the other videos and check out how to do a two-point perspective in a little bit more detail. So, grab your ruler. I did find one for this video. And let's see what we can do. So, last time, we looked at the one-point perspective. And if you remember, that means all the lines on the inside and the outside of the shape are heading towards that vanishing point and we had that right in the middle of our chair. So this time we want to do a two point perspective and that means we have two vanishing points. So just start off with two little dots that go left and go right here. This means that our chair is going to be on an angle and we'll see more of the left side and the right side rather than looking at the top and the front. So let's start with the most important thing in this perspective, which is the edge. Remember when we had our cube, the face was the most important thing that was closest to us. We started off with a perfect rectangle. Well, when we have a object in a two point perspective is actually the edge. So our chair is standing as a normal chair. So that means we want to start with a vertical line. So we always have vertical lines on our chair or our object in a two-point perspective. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm starting with the edge of this part of the chair. Imagine this chair has now rotated and this edge of the leg is coming towards us. So what can I do from there? Well, first of all, I am going to just draw a very light perspective line so that I can rub out any lengths that I don't like and it just gives me a chance to see what the proportions are. So again, I'll do a very faint line there and a very faint line here. So whenever we have an edge, we end up starting to build corners. So that means I need a perspective line coming from my first vanishing point, hit in the corner, and then going towards a second vanishing point. So this is a rule you need to follow all the time with your perspective. Now, what I wanna do is start to think about how will this chair look on its edge? How wide will those gaps be with the, um, with the legs behind there? So I'm just gonna draw a tall leg there. I'll have a look at it and I think actually it's probably a good size. Uh, according to my edge there. I could probably make this chair a touch bigger if I wanted to add detail, but to be honest, I don't really want to, so that's all right. And on my right-hand side, I am gonna go literally like a millimeter bigger, not even a millimeter, just a tiny bit, because when you sit on a chair, it is longer the more forward it goes. So let's get this to a point where I can actually understand it a bit better. So I'm gonna do the legs, and remember, this one will be smaller because it's further away from us. And this one closest to that front edge will be a little bit bigger. So I'll just see what that looks like. And then I'll just draw this one. And quite difficult to see it still because just constructing it. And then I want to get that bit of detail in there. And again, you see I'm going to my vanishing point. If this was going to keep going, it would probably touch here on the chair and then that means I can just draw it there. So that shows me that they're the same size. So let me just rub out just the extra lines that we don't need. Okay, but it still looks a bit weird because we don't have that depth. So we essentially have another corner here and another edge. So anything, as I say, that goes from vanishing point number one touches the corner and goes to vanishing point number two. So. Let me just do a small line to show it's 3D. And you see it starts to look like this leg in the front. So I will do my vertical line following that rule. And then I want to do the same on this leg here. So I just want to do a very small edge. And then a vertical line. 
So let's work our way up then and we will start building that little lip that's right on the top there. So all I want to do is find my edge. So is it going to be exactly where my chair is? I think probably let's do that. And then I want to reach my corner. So I'm heading towards that vanishing point, moving my ruler so it pivots on that vanishing point. And that's going to go out and then the same on here. So if at any point you're like, what on earth are you talking about? How did you get that? I would recommend going back into Patreon and or Skillshare, wherever you're watching this, and try and find my perspective videos because that is going to be very, very helpful for your drawing. So I will now go up the back of the chair. So I'm just using that leg as a parallel comparison and that's going up there. And I will get that back corner. So we've made another corner where all these lines are meeting. And I'll just do it quite light so I can figure out how far it goes on this other side. So again, I'll put my ruler on the vanishing point and then go to the corner. And then that will tell me how to do the top of my chair. So at the moment, now I've done this, it looks like this is way too tall. And that's because the size of my chair is smaller than the one on the left. And that's fine, because I'm following the rules and it will still work. So I'm just going to draw my line up there and start to think about what that looks like for proportions. So let me remove the horizon line because I don't want to see that now. Okay. And then my ruler, because this face is facing the left hand side vanishing point, I just want to think about the top of it. So you can see it starts to twist. And I think actually, if I added another line on the top for that bit of decoration, then that starts to represent that top part up there. So I had a mini heart attack for a moment there. I was like, oh my God, is this going to work? <laughs> now I'm like, yeah, of course. I followed the rules and it works. Okay, great. So then let's do the same at the bottom. So remember I had a bit of decoration, a bit too small because I stupidly covered it up. Okay, so let's get that design at the bottom as well. And then I might actually just want to make that a touch bigger. See, I'm not bothered at all about making mistakes. I'm just fixing them as I go. Okay, good. So I'm happy with those sizes. And then what I want to do is just make this a little bit more 3D. So all I'm going to do is line it up with the edge of my excess there. And it's very tiny. Um, and I've got a corner. So it either has to go to my left vanishing point or my right one. But because it's facing the right hand side, it goes towards the right hand vanishing point. Fab. So what I'm going to do now is get those beams of wood going up here. So I just want to start with those two and then I'll get a gap, add the wood. So remember last time I fudged it and I had to do it again, but that's fine. Oh my God, I think I nailed that one. <laughs> um, but it's a tiny bit harder to see um, because it's tiny. Well, actually it's just a bit confusing with all these lines. So I now want to make it 3D. So what I'm going to do is put my ruler on this vanishing point. Actually, I'll show you underneath. And then I want to see underneath it. So in the gaps, I'm going to draw a line and that goes all the way across there. And then I'm going to do a vertical line for that 3D section. So up there, up there, and it gets a teeny tiny bit bigger as it gets closer to us. And then the inside, so again, we do have a slight problem with the angle, just like we did before, but actually I think it's fine because it's very small. <laughs> okay, there we go. So there we go. There is the two-point perspective version of our chair. And of course, 
do add some shadings. Do follow those same rules where you're thinking, where is the light coming from? And what does that mean for the value that the shading will be? So for me, anything that is underneath, so these faces, they are gonna be really dark. Anything that is, well, you see this one is, is facing the left. So that's gonna be darker as well, especially the ones that are um, at the back. So my light source is basically going to be coming from, maybe from here actually, so <laughs> from this angle. So the front going to be like this. Now we can't see the chair, sorry, we can't see the leg behind because it's covered by the angle of the chair. So the chair can actually, it doesn't have to be in the middle, it can be left, it can be right, and you might end up seeing more legs than this one, you can only see three. Um, it just depends on where you place the chair itself. And it's the same with the one point perspective. You can have things off center, you can um, have them lower, have them higher. So there's a lot of scope for play on the perspective. And I'm actually gonna make this darker on the inside leg because that will be in shadow. The light source is really gonna struggle to get in there. So I'll make that darker. And then just under here. And then this can be a lighter, be a nice contrast. Fab. So what I want you to do is just work your way around now. Just trying to improve the shading. So just mainly so you can visualize and understand what it's all about. And the main point of this exercise was to try and draw the, sh the same shape in two different perspectives. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing ever is. So please don't beat yourself up um, and definitely watch the, the videos previously about the um, one and two point perspective because that gives you a whole rounded version of what it actually means and to understand it a bit more. I think especially if it's a little bit confusing for you because it's your first time, you definitely should watch them. They're at no extra cost, so that's great. And if you're... Um, if, if you get it really quickly, uh, then amazing. And hopefully this all kind of made sense and it was just about putting those pieces together. So I'm pretty pleased with it, I'm not gonna lie. It's not a bad chair at all. And it rotates. Um, definitely could have done it a bit bigger. <laughs> but it's great, it works. You can sit on that one, you can sit on that one. Job done.